Adultery is being with a, uh, you know, being with a woman you're not allowed to be with, whereas wasting seed is you could do it by yourself. So is it like the same sort of... The outcome of adultery is, is wasting seed, so yes. But with adultery, you get a couple of sins. You get the wasting seed part and the adultery part. You have double whammy. So adultery is worse? In essence... So Chazal asks, if wasting seed is such a big deal, then obviously Avraham Avinu, who knew the entire Torah, much, much more than we could even imagine knowing, to such an extent that our Gemara, Masechet Avodah Zarah, the tractate of Avodah Zarah, is only a handful of parts, a handful of sections. His was 4,000 sections. Meaning just his Gemara, Avodah Zarah, some say 400, some say 4,000, either way, it's a lot. It's more than our entire Gemara. Just his one tractate is bigger than our entire Gemara. So how, if he knew that his wife can't bring children to the world, he knew. It wasn't a secret. He knew. He's a prophet. His wife was a prophet. They knew. What are you still doing it for? What are you trying for? You know it's not going to happen. It's wasting seed, No. Zal explains, I believe this is the Midrash Agadon and maybe actual source in the Zohar. That all of those seeds that they used for the 90 years of not having children, or obviously a little less than that, ended up creating the Neshamot of all the Gerim, of all the converts. Which is part of the reason of why every convert says, My father is Avraham. He created you 4,000 years ago. So what happens to them, to the people who aren't like... Aren't well, doing it. A, Obviously like, those, they, you know... Do they get recycled? Like, do they go back up and then yeah, take right. their turn? Yeah, it's, it's similar to what you're saying. It's, uh, and even for, for us, let's say, what about, okay, if a woman's pregnant, are you wasting seed, right? No, so here's the thing. They say Uber and you're responsible, you're responsible for effort, not outcome. In life in general, Hashem, does not punish you for effort. He punishes, he punishes you for lack of effort. The outcome is only in his hands. Just like we were talking about in the beginning of this year. We can't do anything, really. Everything is a shame. One of the, you know, these ten remembrances. The tenth remembrance, or the ninth remembrance, that you have to repeat every day after Shachrit, or at any point during the day, is that Hashem, in essence, is responsible for everything, responsible for your Panasa, and so on. Which in essence is a reminder that not only is he responsible for your Panasa, he's responsible for everything. Because you as a human being can't do anything. You want to believe you can do something, but in reality you can't. You can, you know, depend on Hashem. You want to move your hand? Hashem has to allow you to move your hand. You want to see? Hashem has to allow your eyes to see. You want to think? Hashem has to allow your brain to function. And so on. Hashem is everything. So, in essence, we are responsible for ishtadlut, for effort, for trying, for exerting effort. But as far as outcome, what actually happens as a result of that effort, that is something that only Hashem can decide. You can work, not 9 to 5, but 24 hours a day and still be poor. There's many, many people that work very, very hard, much harder than all of us put together, and they're still broke. And there's some people that barely work and are multimillionaires. Multi-millionaires. Why? Hashem decided he's going to be a millionaire and he's going to be broke. The outcome is not because you're a hard worker. Don't think you became rich because you're a hard worker. Don't think you became successful because you're smart. Don't think your wife is beautiful because you're so wonderful. Hashem decided this and Hashem decided that. In essence, getting to the bottom line of your question, Hashem is responsible for the outcome. We are responsible for the effort. You are obligated as a man to try to fulfill the mitzvah of pu'ubu, of bringing children to the world. A woman is not obligated, but obviously it's a nice partnership. So now, you're responsible to try. Whether you're going to have children or not, it's not up to you. But you have to try. 
and you're not allowed to not try until you at least fulfill the mitzvah, which means you had at least one boy and one girl. This is the reason why there's no hetel to take birth control pills just because you want to have fun. You're only allowed to take birth control pills if there is some medical issue, if you just gave birth. You have to get rabbinical approval to do it, not just you feel like having fun. Oh no, we're still too young, or we want to go on vacation this year and I want to look good in my bikini. There's no hetel. So you have to fulfill the mitzvah pool because in essence you're gonna have, you have to do it. So now, if two people fulfill that mitzvah, they try to bring children to the world. They do their share. There's no kid. It's not their problem. It's Hashem's problem. He decided there's not gonna be a kid. Somebody 60 years old, 70 years old, they can't, physically, they can't bring a kid to the world. She already went through that time. She already passed that time, his seed doesn't, something. Can't happen, physically, cannot happen. Not your problem. You're responsible for effort. Outcome, that's his business. If someone understands this, everything in their life changes. Same thing obviously goes for someone that's pregnant. Obviously if a woman's pregnant, she can't get pregnant twice. She's already pregnant. Same thing, again, it's not your problem. Number one, the reason why she made it enjoyable is because if it wasn't enjoyable, no one would have kids. One person in the neighborhood would have a kid, everybody would see what the headache the kid is bringing, no one else would have a kid. So Hashem made it enjoyable. If He wanted you to just be like animals, He wouldn't make it enjoyable. And then no one would have any kids and the world would be destroyed. So He made it enjoyable, which means you're supposed to enjoy it. But there's a kosher way to enjoy intimacy. You don't have to be a lion. You can enjoy intimacy. But there's a, there's a kosher way to do it. So Hashem gave us a certain amount of privileges, a certain amount of time to spend with our wives, a certain amount of time not to spend with our wives, a certain amount of times to be together, a certain amount of times not to be together, a certain amount of time that you can be pregnant, a certain amount of time you can't be pregnant. The point is that as long as you are within those boundaries, your life will be wonderful. Your intimate life, your you know, spiritual life, material life, everything will be wonderful. As soon as you start going out of that circle and start creating your own circle, that's when problems begin. Yeah. But is that only under the context in which you engage in traditional sexual encounter with seed is spilled within the woman? Yes. Well, it's as long as long as you are doing, you know, you're performing intimacy in a kosher way. So that means that the semen has to go in the place it's supposed to go. You know, otherwise it's considered spilling seed. It's considered wasting seed. If okay. uh, if it's going anywhere else in the body or anywhere else, then it's considered spilling seed. We learned this from Eren Onan. Eren Onan, which were the two uh, children of uh, Yehuda, Judah, they both had the same wife. And both of them were killed by Hashem, even though this was before Matan Torah. This was even before the Torah. And the reason why is because they both found Tamar to be ultra beautiful. She was one of the most beautiful women that ever existed. And they said, listen, if she gets pregnant, it'll ruin her beauty. So they ejaculated, but just not inside. Somewhere else. Hashem said, oh, okay, you don't want to bring kids to the world? Fine, I don't need you either. So he killed both of them. This is also one of the major strongholds of where we, law, where we learn that wasting seed is also a sin for goyim. It's not to the same level of sin as Jews, but it is definitely something that Hashem frowns upon and, and views as something disgusting. So in essence, as far as seed, you're supposed to try. You're supposed to. The seed is supposed to go... In the vagina, there's no other place that a woman can get pregnant. And as long as it's there, you're fine. Whether there's a baby or not is not your business. Whether you become rich or not, not your business. Whether you are going to become a Talmit Chacham or not, not your business. You are just supposed to try. As long as you try, they can't complain about you. You go up to Shemayim, say, listen. They're not going to say, listen, Amos, why won't you Moshe Rabbeinu? What do you mean? You made me Amos. I can't be Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh, you know what? You're right. If I want you to be Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to be Moshe Rabbeinu. You have to be Amos. That's what Rabbi Zusha. Rabbi Zusha, they would ask him, Rabbi, what are you trying to be your whole life? What's your, what's your, what are you trying to be? I'm just trying to be Rabbi Zusha. Yeah. What about Rabbi Akiva, Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? He goes, no, no, I'm just trying to be Zusha. Just Zusha, not even Rabbi Zusha, just Zusha. 
Why is Yerusha? He goes, because when I go up to Shemaim, they're not going to ask me, why weren't you Moshe Rabbeinu? Why weren't you Rabbi Akiva? They made me Zusha. I'm going to be Zusha. I'm going to be the best possible Zusha I can be. So you have to try to be the best version of you, not someone else. But that also means you can't waste time. You can't just spend your time with pilpulim. Pilpulim means like just like mental stimulation for absolutely no reason whatsoever. It's like a, you know, a, um, there's a word for it in English I keep forgetting. Uh, huh? Entertainment? No, no, it's not for entertainment. Yeah, I guess it's entertainment, but it's not. There's something else for it. Whatever. You got the message. Go ahead. Yeah.